I'm heading now to coffee addiction. If you're thinking, can you actually make money in Singapore selling coffee? I think the answer is yes, but it's pretty challenging. Rent is high, manpower is hard to solve, and there's intense competition, correct? So today I'll be interviewing Mr. Max Lee, who actually started this coffee store, Coffee Addiction, after giving up his corporate career in an MNC. In the process, he's even cleared his MBA. So why would someone give up a successful career and pivot to something that is their passion? I'm also curious to find out, and that's why we are having this discussion. Hey, Max. Good hey. to see you today. Hi, Josh. Maybe Pleasure. I'd like to lead off with a playful question. How about that? If it's too painful, if it's you know, too much filled with regrets, you must let me know. MBA, it's very expensive to take, very difficult to pass, and usually it's for corporate career, right? Why would you, before starting an entrepreneurship, starting a store like this, do your MBA? Back then when I started to do my MBA, it's few reasons. First is the environment. It was COVID period and I had nothing better to do, so I went to study and then I studied for the exam. So when I got the offer, I thought that it is right because it has always been my plan to further my studies. I had my bachelor's in engineering, so I always knew that I want to do uh, further my studies in business. Do I expect myself to start entrepreneurship right after? No, I did not expect myself to do that uh, and I had not planned to do that. But more of, I always knew that I would be doing entrepreneurship eventually. Well, what's your background or what intrigues you to entrepreneurship? Because that's something like, you know, sounds very nice, but there's a lot of work to it. Certainly there must be something that pulls you to do this path that settle for a very stable corporate career. I will mention my bachelor's degree is in uh, engineering. And then I had previously worked in oil and gas industry. I had worked in construction industry. After my MBA, I actually worked a while in an e-commerce uh, company. So as of now, yeah, I do hold a double MBA. Uh, double MBA? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so prior to this, I was actually never from F&B industry. But then, here I am now. <laughs> okay, okay, so, so why, why F&B industry? Is there a particular reason? I have always been very passionate about this industry. I mean, I love our Singaporean food. I really think that our food culture has so much more potential. Mm. However, I think that uh, most of our parents wouldn't want us to step into F&B industry, right? Like, oh, you spend so much money studying, you should do this, you should do that. I don't think parents would want uh, children to go into F&B industry because it's a tough place. It's tough and it's yeah. risky, maybe, yeah. correct? Uh, we are right now at He Sang Ying. Uh, his coffee store and I have awesome coffee over here so coffee is very ingrained culture in Singapore's mm. context you want to preserve this moving forward is, is that one of the key motivating points? I think coffee is a language that uh, most of us speak so it is uh, something that is very easy to establish common grounds mm. yeah, but uh, not only just for just drinks itself uh, there is also many uh, other food that is important to Singapore culture la. so right now at this place that we are filming what was the journey like to bring this to fruition? Because, you know, in terms of entrepreneurship, first step is idealization, right? Then it's execution. So maybe share with us a bit on, on journey, just in case there are some nuggets of wisdom. I think I will start off with uh, how I actually get myself half a foot into F&B business first. Hmm. What I did, I first started a business in F&B retail, where I started a coffee, tr coffee bean trading business. Yeah, at a Commonwealth Crescent Market. Uh, there's this shop called Coffee Together. This is where uh, we trade uh, coffee beans. So that we distribute, or rather we sell coffee beans, both Nanyang Kopi, as well as uh, single origin Arabica beans. Yeah, so this is how I got myself half into this industry while I was doing my MBA. I start off with that uh, because for retail, the uh, commitment level of the business is much lower. Usually for retail, especially like if you are open in the market, right? You can open like five days a week. But at the moment, if you are starting the business and you're starting in a shopping mall, and if it's F&B, usually you're expected to open seven days a week, you know, a certain working hour to a certain working hour. I think that commitment level is much higher. Mm. So if you are gonna own a business, there's a lot of chance that you're gonna be really tired because if uh, employees cannot come to work, you'll be called to duty very often. So if I hear correctly, the journey started selling retail. Maybe that's a good point that everybody can consider. If you are doing f and doing... maybe. <laughs> for, for myself, I can share a bit also. I did ice cream business. Yeah, yeah, saw that. And I had no prior f and experience also. Mm. So when I look back at my own journey, I always remember, hey, why, why in the world did I get myself into f and Where it's totally something different. I studied accounting, I did financial services. And when I went to f and everything I applied was on theory. 
ton of mistakes. <laughs> a ton of mistakes. I can't imagine. At least now you start off with retail coffee beans, which I guess must be supplying the shop itself, okay. right? So one part of the equation is off. Mm-hmm. Feels like in this entrepreneurial journey, there's always like a thousand pieces of unknown maps, correct? Mm-hmm. Like we RPG, we move, move, move. Then we realize things that we don't know and we avoid or minimize mistakes. <laughs> so that's a valuable piece to your puzzle, if you want to guess. I have to say so. Back then, I was at a crossroad to see what should I do with the bean trading business. Mm. Uh, should I just uh, let it be, just continue it, let it run, or should I uh, expand downwards? Or yeah, that was at a crossroad, and yeah, that's when I thought maybe it's time I should start a co- copy shop. Yeah. Also, at the same time, we have actually a lot of knowledge and experience gained from selling beans. We speak to a lot of our customers who feedback about which blend they like the most. So, like the blends that we use here, it's actually over the years we get this feedback. Mm. You know, we make the best blend. I hope you enjoy the coffee. Yes, yes, it's good. <laughs> I mean, this this is really my honest opinion. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So that's how. Uh, yeah, like you mentioned, I think you mentioned like a game term like RPG. The maps are hidden. So I, I usually view in another in another way is that I think entrepreneurs usually have a mind and they have an end goal in mind. But uh, more importantly, is tr- prior to getting to the end goal, the entrepreneur must try to navigate through the different maps so mm. that they can eventually get to the end goal. Every step they take is hopefully a step closer to the end goal. Now let's lead to the our hater for today's video itself. <laughs> <laughs> the, the shop is the shop is not doing well enough. I hear they mention publicly that right now we are clocking around 30,000 in sales. Mm. Definitely pretty good. M- much better than my ice cream shop. <laughs> <laughs> How is operations run right now to achieve this? And what do you think someone should know before thinking they can build something like what you have already? A small little success. I think starting from scratch is really tough. Mm. I mitigated my risk of starting from scratch uh, at a coffee shop by acquiring one. So this coffee shop that you're looking at is actually a quiet business. Yeah, so six months ago, I acquired this coffee shop. Yeah, it's not to say that uh, there's no risk in acquiring businesses. There's still a lot of risk. But the more important thing is, I did a shortcut here. I acquired one instead of building so one. So you do pay a lump sum, if we were to hear correctly. Uh, we, we don't discuss this yeah, we, amount, we, we but there will be like a sum to buy over everything to start. That means all the equipment, something like that. Everything. In- that means to say the whole entire company. Even though a lot of time people will say, wow, a crime business, that sounds like very expensive because you need to buy over a lot of things and usually it's a lump sum. But think about this. If one day, if I actually have to start a shop like this, I do have to spend that amount of money renovating. Mm. I do have to spend the amount of money buying equipments and, and as well for every single thing. On the good side is that usually for a business acquisition, I don't have to build the operations from start. That's how I view it. I actually agree with it. Because when I look back at my journey, I spent on the renovation. I lasted there for 10 months. Renovation totally wasted. It cost me 40000 or what just to build in the Shelving. TV screen, yeah. uh, everything, the, the, the water pipes. Because F&B, some people may not know, uh, there's drainage things that NEA require. Mine was 10 years ago knowledge, so I don't know what are the latest requirements. But there are things that we need to follow in terms of guidelines. And I had to reconstruct all those to fit that shop in Bishan MRT. So buying over something existingly, but how do you get to know the opportunity to buy? There has to be a story to it, right? Sometimes if you are on the online channels, you know, you see advertisements or sometimes friends of friends. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes it can even appear on some property trading platforms mm-hmm. that they mention there will be a takeover. Or, oh. you know, sometimes I see, if you scroll social media, they will say this place for takeover and that place for takeover. Something like this. Mm. But if I were to assume the previous shop operating here was not profitable that's why they are selling I believe and you're so. going to sell the exact same thing would that be repeating that lack of success so what this do you think of that point of view I agree I think a lot of people will say hey are you crazy why are you buying a losing money business mm. uh, from someone else you know the person already showed that they cannot make money so that is the, the general thought uh, that I, I hear for me I feel that I had a little bit of competitive advantage I know my beans, my, I know my coffee very well. So I know that um, if I come in here, uh, of course I have to come to see the shop and I see what opportunities I see at this place. Mm. Yeah. And I see that, you know, like what, what kind of improvements I can drive at this business. Only then I thought that, okay, perhaps it's, um, it's a worthwhile investment. So if I were to guess, that must be the beans, but you think that the previous product can be improved or am I reaching too far? 
Uh, I mean, beans is definitely one of the one of the first things we change. Because food fall, we can't change, right? Food fall, we can't change. But I think uh, the food fall is generally still okay here. Mm. Okay, so beans, you changed it, and maybe you change the menu to fit more timings. Mm. Like even if I change the beans, you know the the way that we brew have to improve, become more consistent, and you know even the motivation of staff, all these matters. F and B is really about the end experience that the people, uh, other than the food, is the experience that they have. It's all the little details that adds up uh, that affect the uh, F and B experience for customers. Customers' revenue increasing. This could only be showing that uh, you are doing good and better. I don't think that's the secret sauce. It's like uh, more, but more of you have to improve every touch point individually and consistently. I love that point. Improvement is always a one percent thing. Wow. Here, improve one percent. The service improves one percent. The product improves one percent. Naturally, they'll translate to profitability. To end things off, could I find out maybe a myth about entrepreneurship or F and B? Because you know, many times we think about multiple income streams. Alright, that's how I put my feet into the water, hey, I, I want to build an F&B business to get multiple income streams. Then nowadays, when I think, hey, that takes some effort. So the myth is that I start a business, I can hire people, and then it will automate a money-making tree. So I was trying to probe, is there any myth on that front that you think will be a good wisdom not to share with each and every one of us? Back then, when I acquired the shop, I think that is one, uh, that's a very good decision on my end. Because an existing business means that it already has existing customers. Mm. You do not need to build the customers from scratch. Mm. It's actually very challenging to build customers from scratch. This is uh, my view. So this is the first shop, right? Actually, we recently started another shop. Oh. We have a second branch. Congrats, yeah. congrats. Thank you. We started a shop a month ago. So I, was, I, I thought to myself, oh, you know, Business, uh, if I start a shop, I already have an existing shop here. We start a shop there. We'll be, we'll be quite soon that you know, we should be able to build the revenue like this shop. I was wrong. Yeah, there are just days that the revenue is just in, in tens of dollars. Okay, uh, so the footfall is different from what I see over here. Slightly which is different. Very strong. Mm. But it's still basement connected to oh. the uh, MRT station. So the Homework part needs to be deeper than... For me, I don't think it's a homework part. I think the footfall is something that I've measured. But I think that um, I came from this shop, right? So there, re there was already existing customers. So when I improve my product and services, uh, naturally, uh, it's a multiplier effect on the existing customers. But when I open a shop there, I practically seem to start from zero. So mm. this means that I should provide more runway for myself so that I don't constantly have to feel that pressure that, hey, why is that shop not performing? Mm. But mm. to be frank, you know, it's, only on, it's, the, it's just, it just opened for a month. I cannot expect it to be positive cash flow that soon. So yeah, I think that's something that, uh, it's something that my expectations, my uh, forecast should have managed it better. I understand that. I think journey-wise, we always have mistakes, hiccups. One success does not translate 100% to the next one. But that's life. That's life. That's mm. why we have discussions like this. To really un learn from each other's wisdom and journey. And maybe the next third one will be a smashing success like this. I mean, uh, if, uh, if the brand grows uh, exponentially, maybe yes. But it's, we are still a far shot from that. <laughs> mm. So as always, come down to the shop. We are at Capital Piazza, right? Uh, Capital Piazza. Capital. Mm. I think mm. coffee is fantastic. I invited Max just out of the blue <laughs> and really just to reshare really journeys of entrepreneurship as well as things that we may not know on you know, starting business and stuff because this relates to finance we always think it's easy to make money on that front so thank you so much for listening in thank you Max also for this interview thank and you. we'll see you in the next episode take care and goodbye thank you